Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. Newly obtained court documents show Marcus Schumacher was armed and ready to pull the trigger the night of February 10th. Thanks for joining us tonight. Those documents outline what led to the murder of Fargo police officer Jason Mosier. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric was able to get a copy of the search warrant. And Bradford, what can you tell us? Christine, these court documents outline the events of overnight, February 10th to the 11th. The warrant says shortly after 7 p.m., Fargo police officers responded to a domestic violence call to the house on 9th Avenue North. It was Schumacher's son calling that his dad had a gun and had tried to shoot his mother. About an hour later, Marcus Schumacher called dispatch himself, saying he had a weapon and that he would wait for everyone to, quote, get out of the area, adding he will hurt, quote, anyone that comes close to the house. The documents say at 821, a gunshot was fired out of the window of the residence, and three minutes later, Schumacher said to dispatch, quote, I told you I was serious. It was at 923, the report says dispatch received notice of an officer down. It was just before 6 a.m. Thursday, February 11th, that officers could gain entry to Schumacher's house, where he was found dead on the living room floor with a Winchester 243 caliber rifle underneath his body. We don't know yet how many rounds police fired at Marcus Schumacher, but remember, according to the ATF, a restoration of rights occurred here in North Dakota, allowing Schumacher to buy and own a firearm. Christine? Okay, thanks Bradford. Coming up at 6, we'll have a more in-depth breakdown of what investigators found upon entering Schumacher's home, including empty pill bottles, dozens of spent shell casings, and a number of guns. To see the full documents, go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Also new at 5, we're following a story we first brought you months ago. The investigation into the misuse of government property against the Stutzman County Sheriff's Department has concluded. The BCI investigated the claims and found that there was not enough evidence to charge anyone in the department. Now, the sheriffs and police departments have concluded their internal investigation into the claims. One of the suspects in the BCI investigation, Sergeant Elizabeth Cap, has just been terminated from the Stutzman County Sheriff's Office after working there for nearly 13 years. Kaiser said Cap had been subject to a performance improvement plan since November after receiving an unsatisfactory performance review and a letter of reprimand. Inside Cap's termination letter from Kaiser, it says that Cap sent emails about Kaiser in the investigation saying, quote, you screwed me over with the evaluation and appeal process and that, quote, the county is run like communists. Kaiser's letter to Cap also references our jet ski whistleblower investigation several times. It says Cap's actions imply involvement, involvement and or withholding information in the investigation. You can read the documents and the termination letter on valleynewslive.com. And tonight on Valley News Live, we have much more information based on the investigation as to who sent Valley News Live the packet anonymously. March 2nd through the 5th marks the 50th anniversary of one of the most historic blizzards on the Northern Plains. In 1966, the massive blizzard set a three-foot record for snowfall in one event in North Dakota. The North Dakota state climatologist reported 70, per, 70 mile per hour winds that piled up snow into 30 to 40 foot snow drifts in parts of the state. Power was out for several days in some areas, and nine people died in North Dakota and Minnesota. Heavy drifts crushed sh sheds and broke windows. Another cool gray day, and there's snow out there, but will it hit the valley tonight? Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn for more details. Robert? We do have some flakes flying in parts of the area. We've seen a few flurries even here in the uh, Fargo-Moorhead area over the past hour or so, and we'll see a little bit more snow. As we head through the rest of the evening, could be enough to create a few slick spots in a few locations. Right now, temperatures mostly in the 20s and 30s, but it's been a cold day up in Roseau. Still hanging on to some teens there. 16 degrees, 29 in Grand Forks, 30 here in Fargo, also 30 in Detroit Lakes and in Wapton. Wind speeds not particularly strong, especially off towards the east where we've got some calm winds in Bemidji and Wadena, but enough to create some wind chills as cold as 6 degrees in Roseau, 16 in Valley City, 10 up in Langdon. Clouds, we've got them. We're going to continue to see cloudiness as we head through the overnight hours tonight. Underneath those clouds, 
I mentioned the snow, and there it is. We've had some flurries here in Fargo, and there's more snow off towards the west, and this will continue to slide off towards the east and southeast. To the west and south of Fargo, half an inch to an inch of snow, not out of the question. Here in Fargo, just a few light snow showers or flurries, not going to amount to very much at all, and temperatures steady to slowly falling as we head through the 9 o'clock hour. We've got some warmer weather on that seven day forecast, as well as some more precipitation chances. We'll get into all that here in just a few minutes. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. Formal charges have been filed against a Grand Forks Central teacher for allegedly having sex with a female student. 41 year old James Whalen faces two counts of corruption of a minor. One is a Class B felony, the other is a Class C felony. The maximum sentence is 10 years in prison. Whalen was hired in 1998 and put on administrative leave February 22nd. He resigned his teaching job yesterday. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has much more on all of this, including reaction from parents. According to court documents, James Whalen, chairman of Grand Forks Central Science Department, allegedly had sex with a female student who was at least 15 years old at Central High School and at a Grand Forks resident. School District Communications Director Tracy Gent says parents were notified of the situation Tuesday afternoon via an automated phone call. School district officials have declined to comment on camera. However, parents did comment when we drop our kids off at school, there's an expectation they'll be safe and we can get on with our day. It's a trust that's broken when parents find out a teacher may have been having sex with a student. It's not something that happens. These are our kids. All right. Do you think the punishment should be severe? He's a teacher. He's a leader. He's supposed to take care of our kids while they're at school. I was in school when this happened before uh -huh. with a teacher. We just need more information. I. I, I'm not making any judgments until we found out a lot more information. More details of exactly how and why this happened are expected as this case moves through the court system. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Whalen has made arrangements to turn himself into the jail. He's also retained Fargo attorney Robert Hoy. Hoy represented West Fargo teacher Aaron Canodal in his case last year. Whalen's first court appearance has not been scheduled yet. A Bemidji man was arrested after he escaped custody and hid in a Catholic church. Billy Large ran across the street and entered St. Philip's Catholic School as children were exiting the building. Large was located in an unoccupied third floor classroom hiding under a desk and was taken into custody. Large was arrested for a probation violation, possession of methamphetamine and escape from custody. The Bemidji Fire Department responded to a commercial building fire this morning in the 700 block of Washington Avenue South. The fire was reported at 8.38 a.m. When crews arrived on the scene, smoke was coming from the structure. Firefighters were able to quickly contain and extinguish the fire. Damage is estimated at $87,000. No one was injured and the cause of the blaze remains under investigation. Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson issued a statement to his supporters today saying that he does not see a political path forward and will not participate in the Fox News GOP debate tomorrow night in Detroit. After disappointing numbers following the early voting states through Super Tuesday, it appears Carson's campaign is winding down, although he has not formally suspended his candidacy. Instead, he is continuing with events across the state of Michigan over the next several days. Carson said he plans to discuss the future of his campaign on Friday at a meeting of the Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington, D.C. Tonight on 630 Point of View, hear from the Republican candidates who say they want to run the state of North Dakota. Chris Berg will host a forum with Doug Burgum and Rick Becker. They're both running for governor of North Dakota along with the Attorney General Wayne Stenjum. Stenjum's campaign has not made him available to be part of tonight's forum, but you can join Chris Berg with Doug Burgum and Rick Becker tonight on 630 Point of View on KX4. was held today for longtime sportscaster Scott Miller. Miller passed away on February 25th after a long battle with cancer. He was 57. 
Miller was the play-by-play -play voice of the North Dakota State University Bison football and basketball teams since 1996 and the Fargo-Moorhead Red Hawks since 2006. Many knew him for his signature saying, my oh my, for big plays. In honor of Miller, the Newman Outdoor Field Press Box will be dedicated as the Scott Miller Press Box by the Red Hawks on the opening night of the 2016 season. Placing your loved one in the care of others in a nursing home, for example, can be stressful. Tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, we'll tell you what Minnesota and North Dakota are doing to stop abuse from happening again and again. But they should be asking the facility where they want to put their loved one if they're aware of it and do they use it. Tune in tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10 to see the investigative report from Ashley Bishop. Kids are celebrating Dr. Seuss's birthday around the country by reading across America. That's still ahead tonight. Low pressure spinning its way out of eastern Montana into the western Dakotas, giving us a little bit of snow. We'll see a little bit more snow before the week is over, but we're going to see a nice warm-up before the weekend is over. How much snow to expect? How warm do we get over the weekend? We'll answer those questions coming up.